Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 17th of December. Indian PM Modi urges calm as protests continue over citizenship law. Pakistani court hands death penalty to former President Musharraf. And Sri Lankan president says parliament to be dissolved in March. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi appealed for calm while blaming the opposition Congress party for spreading lies as protests continued across the country over the new religion-based citizenship law. Meanwhile, Indian capital New Delhi was rocked again by a violent protest later in the day. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday accused the opposition Congress party of spreading lies about the Citizenship Amendment Act and creating an atmosphere of fear for Muslims in the country. Speaking during an election rally in Jharkhand, the Prime Minister said, the new citizenship law doesn't snatch away any right of the Indian citizens nor causes any harm. The act seeks to grant Indian citizenship to non-Muslims who have settled in India prior to 2015, fleeing religious persecution in Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. But the law does not apply to Muslims. Modi urged university students who have been protesting across the country against the law to remain calm and said the government is open to debate. Meanwhile, later in the day, two days after protests broke out in New Delhi's Jamia Millia Islamia University, the Indian capital was rocked again with a violent protest in Silampur area. The angry protesters demanding scrapping of the amended citizenship law tossed several vehicles and pelted stones at police, after which the police had to resort to baton charging and firing tear gas shells to disperse them. A large number of policemen had been deployed in the area till the last reports came in. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's former president Parvez Musharraf was on Tuesday handed death sentence by a special court in the high treason case against him. The 76-year-old former military ruler who is currently in Dubai faced treason charges for suspending the constitution and imposing emergency rule in 2007, a punishable offence for which he was indicted in 2014. A special court in Islamabad on Tuesday sentenced former Pakistani President Parvez Musharraf to death for high treason. A three-member bench of the special court found the former military ruler Musharraf guilty in the high treason case and handed him death sentence under Article 6 of the Constitution. This is the first time in Pakistan's history that a military chief has been declared guilty of high treason and handed death sentence. 76-year-old Musharraf, who has been living in Dubai since March 2016, had been facing treason charges for suspending the constitution and imposing emergency rule in 2007, a punishable offence for which he was indicted in 2014. He is currently undergoing medical treatment in Dubai only. Musharraf can appeal the special court's verdict in the Supreme Court if the top court upholds the special court's verdict. The president possesses the constitutional authority under Article 45 to pardon a dead road defendant. 
Moving on, political activist Nasir Raziz Khan has slammed Islamabad's the designs to merge the illegally occupied territories of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan into Pakistani provinces. He said the recent statement by Raja Farooq Haider Khan that he might be the last Prime Minister of Pakistan-administered Kashmir clearly indicates Pakistan's nefarious agenda. Spokesperson of United Kashmir People's National Party or UKPNP, Nasir Aziz Khan, has slammed Pakistani designs to merge the illegally occupied region of Pakistan's administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan into Pakistan. He said the recent statement by Raja Farooq Haider Khan that the Pakistani administration has given him message that there will be no Prime Minister of Pakistan administered Kashmir after him clearly indicates Islamabad's nefarious agenda. The political activist highlighted that administrators in Pakistan openly say that the region should be merged with Punjab province and other parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Yani ke in dono areas ko wo by arms mein Pakistan mein march karna chahte hain aur unhone ek mansooba bandi complete kar li hai. Pakistan ka state of Jammu and Kashmir pe koi local stand aayi nahi tha, legal unki koi claim nahi banta tha, illegal Occupier, the, aggressor, the, UN ki jo resolutions hai, unke bhi. Activists blame the stooge rulers in both the illegally occupied regions, work at Pakistan's behest, and help Islamabad fill its treasuries through economic depredations and exploitation of natural resources. Although Pakistan never had a legal claim over the territories, the administrators have persecuted the locals through military rule and at times forced legislations that left them deprived of any human rights. In news from Afghanistan, U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham on Monday said that if Pakistan applies more pressure on the Taliban, it would be enormously helpful to resolve the conflict in Afghanistan. He made the remarks during his visit to Kabul after meeting the top leadership in Pakistan. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham said on Monday that U.S. President Donald Trump's relationship with Pakistan would really accelerate the chance for peace in Afghanistan. Speaking at a news conference at the Resolute Support headquarters in the Afghan capital, Graham added, the Taliban cannot be trusted to be a reliable counter-terrorism force for America cannot to ensure that the Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State Khorasan do not re-emerge. Uh, I think the relationship that President Trump has with Pakistan uh, could change behavior in a way that would really accelerate the chance for peace. We all know that if Pakistan applied more pressure on the Taliban, it would be enormously helpful to resolving the conflict here. The U.S. blames that Islamabad maintains close contacts with the Afghan Taliban and has long considered Pakistan's cooperation crucial to efforts to end the war in Afghanistan. U.S. Special Envoy for Peace Zalmay Khalilzad had last week announced halt in peace talks with the Taliban after an attack on a crucial U.S. base in Afghanistan's Bagram. Modern news from Afghanistan, a bomb blast in a government office in Afghanistan's Takhar province killed at least one person and wounded four others on Monday. No militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. A bomb planted in a government office rocked Khwajaghar district of Afghanistan's Takhar province on Monday, killing at least one person and wounding four others. No militant group has claimed responsibility for the attack so far, but Khwajaghar has been regarded as Taliban hotbed in Takhar. Meanwhile, in another incident on Monday, at least 10 civilians were killed in a roadside mine blast in eastern Khost province, local media reported. Officials have claimed that the mine was placed by the Taliban in the area, but the group has not yet commended on the blast. This comes as the Taliban has intensified attacks in the country following the pause in the peace talks between the group and the U.S. delegation in Doha. The Taliban in its latest offensive claimed an insider attack last Saturday, which killed at least 23 security personnel in Afghanistan's Ghazni province. Women in Nepal's Gorkha district have started working as masons in reconstruction sites after getting skilled under a special UN program. The program is not only providing the women the opportunity to develop new skills, but is also helping them to be financially independent.
Breaking the stereotype that women should only work inside homes, some female residents of Nepal's Gorkha district have started working as masons in reconstruction sites. The female masons have started working after getting trained under a special program by United Nations Development Program or UNDP Nepal, which not only provided them the opportunity to develop new skills but also made them financially independent. Reconstruction drive in Nepal kick started after the earthquake of 2015, which claimed thousands of lives. Officials said there was scarcity of manpower for the reconstruction initially, but such programs can improve the situation. The government of India is supporting the construction of 50,000 houses in Gorkha and Nuwako districts of Nepal. India appointed UNDP and also United Nations Office for Project Services as socio-technical facilitation consultants for Gorkha and Nuwako district respectively last year. Sri Lanka's President Gotabaya Rajpaksa said on Monday that the parliament will definitely be dissolved in March next year. This comes after the president earlier this month prorogued the house until January 3rd next year. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has said the parliament will definitely be dissolved next March and the general election will be held before the provincial council elections. The president made the statement at a meeting with journalists at the presidential secretariat on Monday, according to local media reports. Gotabaya said he wants a strong government to function and that it could not be done in the current parliament. He said that it was his and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa's intention to hold all the postponed elections. The president had earlier this month prorogued the House until January 3rd next year. Gotabaya Rajapaksa was sworn in as Sri Lanka's seventh president on November 18. However, his party lacks the working majority in the 225-member assembly and ending the session gives him freedom to rule without opposition from lawmakers. With Christmas just round the corner, markets in India's southern state of Tamil Nadu are flooded with wide array of decorative items. The festival is celebrated with much pomp, gaiety and devotion across India. With only a few days left for Christmas, markets in India's southern province of Tamil Nadu are flooded with decorative items for the festival. Shops in Coimbatore city of Tamil Nadu are luring people with a variety of items, including Christmas trees, bells, lanterns, stars and miniatures of Santa Claus, most of which have been imported from China. Products from China continue to flood markets, especially during the festival season, because of the low prices and huge variety. New collections on the lot of available lipo, China land export panirko, uh, China trees and uh, toys, LMA export panirko, new varieties are available in the shop. Le. And this is very amazing. We are seeing so much varieties of Christmas trees, especially the stars. Uh, we have some LED stars here. Uh, so amazing and uh, we are satisfied in this place uh, and uh, we saw some kinds of balls and bells here uh, this is very creative and colorful here India is a land of diversity therefore people from different regions have different customs and beliefs which influence the Christmas celebrations Christians from less than 3% of India's more than 1 billion population, but Christmas is widely celebrated in metros and other big cities with much pomp, gaiety and devotion. The day is marked by singing carols, lighting candles, decorating Christmas trees and exchanging gifts. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SaudiAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.